let's define what stress is. As you know, stress is a force over an area, right? So it's a force per unit area. Now there are two types of stresses. Sigma, or a normal stress, right? And tau, which is a shear stress. Now, before we continue, we have to mention or say, of course, why stress is important for our class. Stress is important because stress dictates the deformation that a soil will suffer when a load is imposed. Okay? It also dictates the strength of the soil. In fact, the strength of the soil is a stress, and we'll talk about that later on. So, a stress is a force over an area. That means that sigma is a, stress or a force over an area, and tau, the shear stress, is also a force over an area, right? What's the difference? Well, for sigma, it's a normal stress, the force is normal or perpendicular, right, to the area. For the shear stress, the force is parallel to the area in question. Okay? So there are two types of stresses, the normal stress and the shear stress, denoted by sigma and tau. So for example, let's say that we have a block, okay, a cube, and it's sitting on a fixed surface. Okay? Now let's say that the side of this cube has a size d, right? So d, 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 right? Now let's say that there's a force here f, and it's applied normal to the top of the cube. Then the stress sigma that acts on the top of the cube, vertically downwards, is equal to the force over the area. What's the area? d squared, right? This d times the d into the page. So this is equal to f over d squared, right? And basically that's the, that's the uh, normal stress sigma. What happens if we have the same cube, okay, but there is a force applied parallel to the top of the cube, like this. In this case, tau is the relevant stress, and that's f over, again, d squared, right? So in this case, of course, the f, these are two different examples, right? In this case, tau acting vertically, sorry, uh, tau acting laterally on this surface is zero because there's no force acting there, right? And on, in this case, there's no vertical force, right? There's no force normal to this plane or to this side of the cube. So in this case, sigma is zero, for example, okay? Now you may have a case where you have both, right? So you have force one here and another force force 2 here, in which case tau would be f2 over d squared and sigma would be, sorry, f1 over d squared. Okay, so that's, those are just simple calculations of stress on planes, in this case on top of cubes, right? Let's move on. <clears throat> Let's look at the top of the cube we just drew, right? So let's say that this is the top, we're looking at it from the top. We know that there is a stress, sigma, let's say for the first example that we did, this one right here, okay? For that example, we're looking at the top of the cube, now we're looking downwards on it. Okay, so we said that sigma was equal to F over A, right? This is D, this is D and therefore the area is all that. Now, this is an important concept that we're going to highlight here. Stress, either this one or the other one, both, both of them, that is sigma and tau, in this case there is no tau because of our example, but the point that, that we have to make here is that stress acts at a point, okay? So, one could say, yes, the stress is acting on this area, but that is not theoretically correct. If we are precise about what we say, we should say that the stress acts at every point on this plane, right? So any point on this top of this cube is feeling a stress, sigma. 
Okay, so you can imagine that arrow that acts down like this, that F, it's divided into very small tiny arrows and inf an infinity of them because there's infinity points and each one of those little arrows is a stress sigma. Okay, and of course it points in the same direction as the force. So, important, stress acts at a point both sigma and tau both of them act at a point okay now let's move on to stresses in soil Oops. stresses in soil okay first of all we're going to define the three different types in general three different types of stresses that occur in soil the first one is called the geostatic okay Geo means soil and static means static. So basically what happens here is that there's nothing else happening at the site. Okay, we always refer to our location for our project as a site, right? There's nothing happening at the site, meaning there's no construction, there's no loading, there's no excavations. There's nothing going on other than the soil sitting there by itself um, with no loads on it other than its self-weight. It has self-weight, right? The particles, the fluid, all that has self-weight. That's a geostatic condition. Okay? There's also induced stresses. These are the stresses that are imposed by, typically in our case, uh, the, the construction processes, right? So for example, let's say that we have a site. Here's the ground surface, that's a tree, right? And let's say that we place a foundation, which is a block of concrete on top of the soil. By doing that we have loaded the soil and therefore there's going to be a spatial distribution of stress in this regime or region, sorry. Okay? So this is the case of induced stresses. We're not going to talk about that in this lecture or in this class. We talk about that in foundation engineering. And number three are dynamic. Okay? That means that's, that's the, the word here is dynamic. So there are dynamic stresses, and these are stresses that are imposed by earthquakes, for example. So we could define dynamic stresses in the case of earthquakes as stresses that are induced by nature itself. Okay? And we are Again, not going to talk about that in this class because that's a topic of soil dynamics, which is another class. This is foundations engineering, but we are definitely going to spend time talking about the geostatic stresses.